Jim Mullen, Senator Jim Mullen, is on the ballot paper uh, at the election. He, of course, uh, at this stage, looks like he could be getting the final spot in the New South Wales Senate, but we'll have to wait, watch and see. Jim, nice to talk to you, mate. Paul, good to be here. So far, I think that life in opposition is not as bad as everyone's been telling me, Paul. <laughs> oh, and everyone got a pay rise and it stopped raining and Absolutely. everything was fine again. <laughs> so, uh, look, let's not gonna pretend. Uh, I'm not going to step back on anything I said for six weeks. I think that uh, there's going to be some very big problems on national defence. I think that the endless focus on climate, not China, is going to have consequences. We're going to have a defence minister now who, uh, in my view, has been compromised by trying to uh, find a way to negotiate and appease China. So let's talk about what defence looks like under the Labor government. Well, the first thing I say to uh, to Labor is I hope you govern in your own right because there are sensible people in Labor. There are no sensible people in the Greens. And as far as I can see, many of the independents are exactly the same. We've got to get away from the capillary and really go for the jugular. And this is what uh, Michael Kroger and John Anderson were talking about when they were talking about a clear vision we are a strategy, we have been a strategy-free government. You know, it, it, we spend and we promise, but how can you have a plan for spending a significant amount of money on defence which ignores fuel, manufacturing, civics in schools, energy, when you, you, you don't say when you need to produce something, so you produce plan after plan after plan, which goes out for 20 years... Uh, you don't say what kind of a war you're preparing for, Paul, and it just becomes so silly. Now, I'm not knocking either uh, 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 Scott Morrison or Peter Dutton. I think that combination have produced more for defence than anyone else in the last 50 years. Now, we face a great, far greater threat now. Therefore, that is very, very important. They face a different threat, and that threat will only grow in the next three to five years during the period of the current government, of the Labor government. Now, we need to, to think strategically, and I've been yelling and screaming about this internally because I've been trying to, trying to do this internally, uh, failed dramatically on doing that. You've got to align your strategy and your operations. And I think, I think Paul, we saw that uh, very, very recently in the campaign, because if I go to the, the electorate of Chisholm, which was Gladys Lou's electorate, uh, the woman who ran it, ran it, who won it, Karina Garland, made 60,000 door knocks, 72,000 phone calls, 25,000 conversations, and she won. I've been mixed up with six electorates for the last, the last uh, year or so, particularly for the last six weeks. We did nothing like that. You've got to have your strategy correct and you've got to take it down into your tactics. If we don't understand that in relation to running a campaign, how are we ever going to understand it for the national security of this country? Just on the campaign side of things, um, there, obviously when you aren't the MP, you don't have the responsibility of the MP, you can spend two years doing all of that stuff. Literally, this is the full-time job is to go and knock on all those doors. But again, in the parts of Australia that, 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 that you saw... How do you get somebody to join a political party? In this case, for you, the, the Liberal Party or the National Party. National Party did well. Again, you know, all shades of green did pretty well, right? Nationals green, uh, uh, super lefty green and teal uh, blue green as well. But how do you get somebody to transfer from being a fan of what you say on Sky News, a fan of your Facebook page, to actually become paid up and proud and be willing to door knock? for the candidate that you believe in, Jim? Well, first, you've got to have something to sell, Paul, and this is what you, you and your guests have been talking about tonight. We've got to define ourselves in a way that people want to buy what we've got to sell. Then secondly, you've got to start talking to people uh, and you've got to be willing to accept people into branches. Now, the people come and try to join our branches and it takes them months to join our branches because we're all scared of factional politics. For crying out loud. So we end up with people who have been in the branches for a ridiculous... With, with a number of exceptions, uh, I, I've got to say, a number of fabulous uh, electorates who do very well for their member. But that's not how we're going to win government back in three years' time. We've got to change the attitude. We've got to use social media. You know, getting uh, our older membership to use social media is like pulling teeth. 
So all of those things have got to be done. Uh, we've got fantastic people that work unbelievably hard but it was ineffective working because we didn't put in the years of work beforehand to do exactly this. And, you know, and as I say, uh, Paul, it's a reflection. If we can't align strategy and the big things, big areas of operations and tactics, if we can't align them in our own strategy, in our own campaigns, how are we going to do it for national security, which is one million times more complex. So we know what uh, the new government faces. We know that China is what it faces. Richard Miles, I think, um, is a person who has tried to find a way to, you know, be the, I don't know, this generation's chief negotiator or something, He's thinking that if he goes and runs between the Chinese embassy and, and his own party, somehow, you know, we'll fix it all. They're going to play him off a break here. I, I'm worried that that may occur... In, uh, in the first period of time, but I have some, I have some faith. Once you once you put aside campaigning and and the the convoluted arguments that we all have, uh, 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 the, fundamentally the Labor Party and I don't say the Greens or the, or the Independents do. Fundamentally, the Labor Party want Australia to continue generally the way it is. They'll, they'll tend towards the left and towards socialism. Richard Miles will be the, will be the same. I suspect that he has been made so paranoid about the allegations that have been made against him in relation to China. And I can assure you that we will be watching him very, very closely. And if he wants advice, we'll be advising him because we have been through this time and time again. And if I've got any message for him, it is, for God's sake, get the bloody strategy organised before you get into the tactics. Because buying aeroplanes and tanks and things is great fun. Politicians love doing it. But get the strategy right, because if you don't get the strategy right, as I said in my six-part uh, uh, six part podcast, Paul, if you don't get the strategy right, it is noise before defeat. And I believe that we run a real potential risk in the Western Pacific of war in this region, much more likely than most people say in the next three to five years. Well, also, it's going to be fascinating to see that, uh, you know, quad meeting that uh, Albo is going to be at in the next couple of days. He's obviously a passenger in it. He'll have a position in it. He'll obviously, ceremonial, all the rest of it. But I certainly hope he sits back and takes some notes rather than says, you know what, I reckon, boys, we should this, we should that. Hang on. Who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? Anyway, we'll wait, watch and see. Thank you, Senator. All the best for your re-election. We'll find out more in the next couple of days.